Hey y'all, welcome to October. It is time to do our September wrap up. I can't believe, I think August and September were both really good reading months. The beginning of September was much more productive for reading than the end because of a giant project, which will be in an upcoming vlog, so be sure to check that out. If you saw my September TBR video, back last month, you would know that my TBR was full of book box books. <laughs> But I completed my TBR like at the midway point in the month and just started grabbing things. The first book that I got read from my TBR was The Moonday Letters by Emmy Itaranda. This was a 3.5 stars. I love the cover because it's so pretty with all of its stars. This is a very thought provoking book. It is very beautifully written. It is written in the style of um, journaling, but like letter journaling, like she's writing letters to her husband every day in her journal and but it's just super super detailed like really detailed as is she's away from him for work because she's a healer and so she's already started it and then she finds out he's missing and she's detailing her search for him it was just very cliffhangery a lot and very thought provoking as to what's happening in the world and solar system because people have lived off world now and yeah it was just very very different and but the end of it the end of it though i did not like because it, it leaves you hanging of well did they or didn't they did he show up did he not show up are they together what happened i don't know i hate it i hate the way the book ended i can't oh, i can't do that but it was beautiful and thought-provoking and really different than what i thought it was going to be really different in some aspects. It was a little slow sometimes. It was a, a, some detail bog sometimes, but if you like the lyrical writing style and you like the beautiful detailedness of things, you will probably enjoy this book. The next book I finished was not actually the next one I started. The next one I started, I had to put down because I just, I couldn't. But then I picked up Violet Made of Thorns by Gina Chen. This is the Owlcrate edition and it's so pretty. I love the cover and the inside stuff. This one was a four star read though. And in this we are following our main character, Violet, as she is the seer of the court in the kingdom that she lives. She and the prince are kind of uh, enemies since they were children and she first moved into the court there. Because uh, while she is really a seer, she really does see the threads of people's life and can read their futures and stuff like that. His father, the king, asks her to lie sometimes to say she saw something that way he can um, make a political move he wants to do or to stretch the truth yeah especially considering his son the prince is cursed and the details involving the curse and not wanting the people to panic and you know do something to his son so there's that the prince's twin sister though princess camilla oh my gosh she was so cool she made wearing a vial of blood around her neck into a fashion statement to stave off enchantment. Because in this um, country, magic does run, run rampant kind of as people bribe fairies. Fairies are everywhere. They grow something that pretty much gets fairies drunk and people provide this to the fairies and the fairies will give them enchantments. Magic used to only be for those who were, you know, favored, who deserved it. Now, if you can give the fairies what they want, which I think was Ambrosia, they'll um, they'll live with you. Like the royal family employs three families, uh, three fairies themselves. It is enemies to lovers, so her and the prince do form this relationship, which is nice. And I like the way kind of it worked out, but their trust issues caused so many problems to ensue. Like something wouldn't have happened if. They could have just broken through that, you know, wall of trust issues. Highly recommend this book, though. It was super enjoyable. Read it really quickly. It was great. The next book I finished in September would be Fairy Tale by Stephen King. This one I did the audiobook for because my library still doesn't have it yet. And um, it was great. It was so much different than what I expected. It came out being a four-star read. I did a whole review video on it if you want to go check it out. Actually, the card will probably be over here. And yeah, it was super enjoyable. Pretty much though, this teenage boy, Charlie, finds out, um, finds his neighbor in his yard with a broken leg and 
this very old neighbor and he starts to care for him and his dog and he finds a portal to a magical world in his neighbor's backyard and it's just a whole sequence of events that completely changes Charlie's lives. It was great. It was definitely one that I was not expecting how things turned out. Had some problems, of course, with it. Some of the things that Charlie decided to do, I was like, this seems unusual for a teenage boy to decide this. Oh well, but yeah, go check out my review video for the full thoughts on this. I'm just glad I picked it up. It, I really am. Uh, I was very nervous about Stephen King. Even though it was not labeled, you know, horror at all, it's still Stephen King, so I was nervous. But it turned out fine. I was fine. The next book I read would be The Woman in the Library by Solari Gentile. This was so good. Oh my god, this was so good. This was four stars, but it is a story within a story. Like we start out and it is two authors emailing each other and that is just perfectly normal and just bouncing things off of each other it seems like. And then that takes like the hugest turn ever. And then what you think though the book is about based off the back is you know a woman screaming in the library and security guards telling people to stay put and four people forming a friendship while they're being you know trapped in the library room. So you think it takes place in the library the whole time, right? That's basically what the back of it gives you the purpose, but they're not. Sure, they're in there, they hear the scream, they do form this bond, they become friends, but they're only in the library for a little bit. And that is actually, so like the author's thing I just said about, you don't know about that until you start reading it. Freddie, Winifred, mm -hmm. he's our main character. And she is very smart, but she can't seem to decide on who she wants to pin the who done it on. And I don't like how she waffles like that. But I love the way everything happened in this book. Like you could not pick out who it was going to be. You were, you couldn't pick it out. You couldn't see what was coming in Freddie's story or between the authors and what was happening there. Because like that started going really weird. That just started with, it was very normal. And then it just left turn. That was my right. Whatever. It was just a full, full confusing thing and it was so good. Like I have to check out more of their backlist because I hope they have more books like this. That was awesome. My next book is another Unplugged Book Box book and this was They Drowned Our Daughters by Katarina Monroe. This one, our main character has just moved back home with her Altower's mother after separating from her wife. So she brings her young daughter back to live in Cape Disappointment which is a Cape Town up north. I don't remember the state. I don't know if it even says the state, but it's like right there on the Atlantic, lighthouses, stuff like that. This is a very generational novel that like you see from so many different viewpoints in Meredith, our main character's family. And it's just so sad. You could say it's very atmospheric because you really feel the cold and the gloom and the everything of this small town, but Oh my gosh, it was so sad. Her whole family seems to be haunted by this tragic thing, and yet every single generation of women don't believe in it. They just think their moms are crazy, or yeah, that's, that's pretty much what they think, is that there's like a crazy gene that runs in their family. And her and her mother's relationship is horrible. It was a little slow at times too, but it's just, this one actually was bigger compared to most of those, so I only gave it a 3.75, but it was an all right book. It, if more dark fiction, speculative, slightly magic-y things are more your style, then you might enjoy this. But it just wasn't my speed, I suppose. It was very nicely written, though. I will say that she did a beautiful job writing it, and it really highlighted the relationships between mothers and daughters, and that familial love that is always there, even if it can't be shown very well, or you don't think it's being shown until you're a mom yourself and then you you understand what was happening. And then the book that finished my TBR, The Drowned Woods by Emily Louise Jones. Like I'm sure so many people are gonna love this. Cause apparently so many people loved The Bone House that she wrote before this. I just, I could not get into this book. I could not get into this book. I wanted to. I mean, she's got I mean, she's got cool powers, right? She's a water diviner, so she can control water. Like, 
she can get the water out of wood, she can turn the water in your body against you. Any sort of water, she can manipulate it, use it. So it's, she should be such a cool character, but she was just not to me. I'm, yeah, if you, if you guys love this, I'm sorry. It's, it's just not my book. And um, the best character was the Corgi, which are apparently spies for the other folk. And everybody kind of was nervous around the Corgi. And it was adorable because he was just a shoe bandit. And yeah, he was adorable. Uh, our other main character, who we do see also through his perspective, he was a normal human boy until everybody in his family got killed. He went to the other folk and asked, you know, to be able to get revenge for his family. But he spent years with them, you know, being their errand person. And he kind of doesn't want that anymore. He's learned, you know, he grew up and he doesn't want to cause harm to people. But because of the gift that the other folk gave him, he kind of can't control it. And when he goes into defensive mode or protective mode or something like that, he's just going to keep going until people are dead. And he feels horrified by that. So he tries to never, you know, touch anybody, never get close or get into that situation. So that was, yeah, for me, the book was kind of slow. It's all about a heist as they're trying to rob this evil king that way um, to kind of get back at him for what happened to our main character, Mare, and her guardian person. And it's just, yeah, this, um, mm-hmm. I also did not like the end of it where they just kind of squeeze this relationship between the two characters in that, like, was never there. Sure, had they kind of been sweet to each other a little bit, but it's more like, you're my friend, you understand me. They were fine as friends. They were fine as friends, but now we had to make it be a relationship. So that was this book. I could only give it a three stars. It wasn't, it wasn't awful, it was just really slow. And I just couldn't get into it at all. Just for me, I couldn't get into it. You guys are probably loving it, but I couldn't do it. The next book I listened to was A Touch of Malice, which is the third book in the Hades and Persephone series. I like this one better than the second one, so it was a 3.5 stars. The first book was still kind of better. I thought this was the conclusion one to the series when I was reading it, and then I got closer and closer to the end, and I'm like, it's not wrapping up. It's totally not wrapping up. We're kind of getting into a big battle-y thing, maybe, but this book ain't wrapping up. Overall, we met more Olympians. Her and her mom really went to went off the deep end there, but um, we found out about a cult. She had anger issues about people not thinking she could help them when she's pretending to be mortal in the mortal world, of course. Didn't, didn't get it. Either way, it was a pretty short listen, which I picked it up because I was expecting to get something in from my library, which is now reported lost, so I have no idea when I'm gonna get that book. And the next three books, because I'll just say them all together, I read Miss Porn Era 2. Every book was a four star read, somehow. Yeah, it was kind of funny, they all came out as four stars. But I super enjoyed these, I'm glad I finally got to them, and then I'll be able to read The Lost Metal in November. I'm really glad. This place, these books take place 300 years after the events of Vin and everybody in the first era of Miss Born, and while I still kind of like that one better because well, it is. It's epic fantasy. It's a totally different ballgame. Though it's just a different feel as instead of high fantasy, you were more western and detective. And the interactions between the two main main characters, Wax and Wayne, it was just so funny. I love their interaction and their friendship. It was awesome. Wayne's sense of morality is good, except when it comes to the fact that he's kind of a klepto and also a constable. So he um, trades things. He doesn't use money as much because he'll um, he'll trade something that's incredibly expensive for something smallish. It, yeah, and he always has to have a hat. He's a master of disguise. Uh, I love the expansion kind of of the magic system in this one. The first one was more person against person, whereas the second one we are getting back into more the magical enemy, and the third one delves a lot into history and what you think you know, and yeah. I need the fourth book now to answer some questions that the end of the third book had to bring up because like, what? Why? So yeah, 
That was really fun. Super glad I got to them. All of them were four star reads. Yes, so good. And the last book that I finished for September would be Verity by Colleen Hoover. And this one, it managed a 3.5. But I really, I really don't get the TikTok obsession with her right now. I don't know. Maybe I picked a not so great one to start, but the audiobook was short and it was kind of free. So I was like, eh, I suppose. I'll try it out. So many people talk about this lady. It was okay, but that's just it. It was an okay book. It wasn't awesome. Did it get dark and twisty? Yeah. Yeah, I did that. I was not expecting that from it at all. True though, I did not actually read anything about this book before starting it. But this book is about an author who gets brought in to kind of ghostwrite slash co-author another series that is a you know best selling selling high series and everything but they write in the same genre so she was brought in by the publisher and the lady's husband to finish this series and as she is there in the lady's house she finds out why she had to ghostwrite and uh trying to go through her notes and trying to figure out this series and everything and it gets very very dark very dark and just everything was happening unexpectedly and it was just I really don't like the end of the book though. I don't like some of the decisions that happened. Like why did they have to happen? It didn't. Mm -hmm. It was alright. I guess I'll read another one about her eventually. September was like a really good reading month. Especially the beginning of the month. The beginning of the month I got like all of that read. So much. And then over the end of the month it went a little bit more slowly. But I was working on a big project as you can see behind me. That will be in Monday's vlog, so be sure to come back and check that out. And the project took a little bit longer than expected. And also I started other projects around the house. As it always happens, you can never do just one thing at a time. Mm -mm. Very excited though that it's probably October and I can start my spooky TBR reads. I am so excited to start those. Like, oh my goodness, I can't wait. I'm already currently kind of reading one that wasn't even on the TBR. It's just it's a carryover one and that will be explained also in a future video so please come back and check those out feel free to go check out my october tbr video let me know what you guys are reading this month and how your september came out i hope that we are going to be reading something awesome this month for sure and i'm so glad you guys have joined me today i'll see you in the next one bye